Uh, hi. <laughs> Hi there. Um, I'm Anna North with the New York Times Opinion <laughs> Section. We're here at the Women's March on Washington. I'm here with uh, with lots of Ohio women and with Teresa Fetter, who is a state representative from Ohio. She's a Democrat from Toledo. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about what brings Teresa and all these ladies here today. Um, so, Teresa, what, um, what, what brings you out here today? Well, we want to um, recruit women and anyone who's concerned about our current president. We know that he was not supportive of many, many people in America. So we're here individually. I'm here to support public education and teachers. Because I am a former teacher, and I want our children to have the best in this country. And there's a lot to fix. It has nothing to do with uh, President Trump's agenda. So we're here individually with my sisters from Ohio, and we are going to shake up this town, and we're going to be heard. So I'm so grateful that you're here, and um, silence is defeat. Silence is defeat, and we are not going to be silent in Ohio. We're going to demand what we need for our, our people in Ohio, families, the economy, the future. So we're going to fix America. Thanks so much. And once again, I'm here with Teresa Fetter, who's a state rep from Ohio. Um, lots of Ohio women. And if you have questions, um, feel free to ask them in the comments. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll try to answer some of them. Um, so once again, here at the Women's March on Washington, it's a big crowd today already. Um, I'd love to, um, what, what do you wish that Donald Trump knew about Ohio women? That um, the Ohio women need to be heard. We care about our children. We care about our economy. And we're hoping that we're going to make progress. And we've been waiting a long time, and women in Ohio are not going to wait any longer. We're going to organize, organize, and organize and be heard really big. So if uh, he wants to work with us, fine. But if he doesn't, you know, we are going to organize, and he will be defeated as soon as possible. And we want to reject the message that, unfortunately, our new president has delivered to our nation of bigotry, of division, of, of hate, dividing people on the basis of religion, basis of national origin, and in many ways hurting the people of this country already with the actions he's taken um, with his executive, his executive orders. We want to counter his bigotry, his hatred, his division, with love, with empathy, with unity, and for bringing people together for the good of all of the people in the country, not the billionaires he stacked his cabinet with. Um, thanks so much, and can you introduce yourself to the Facebook audience? Sure. I'm Mary Jo Kilroy. I represented Ohio's 15th district in Congress during the 111th Congress. That's great. Thanks so much. Once again, we're here with uh, some Ohio women. If you have questions for them, um, feel free to ask them in the comments. Um, we've got a lot of ladies here. Um, I'd love to, if, if anybody else wants to talk about why they're here today, um, yeah. I'm here because I am my sister's keeper. I'm in the company of my sisters, and if my, our people will just humble themselves and pray, because we need it now more than ever. Uh, we are loving people, and that's what we want our president to know, that we are not going to be energized by hate we're going to be energized by love and by caring for each other and to all my sisters i got you i got you that's great thanks so much i'm here with an organization called hear jane roar we're a women's storytelling organization we have a website where you can tell your story we all get together tell our stories um mr trump will know we will never ever give up um that's that's great uh, i think we might have a question well, you we actually have a bunch of people chiming in from where they're watching. Um, we have Mira from Georgia, Tom Berg Bergreen from Myanmar, uh, Chen from China, thanks from Ohio, um, more Ohio people, and uh, lots of people there in Spirit Easton, Pennsylvania, Charlotte. Uh, Bethany wants to know, we need to stay organized today and beyond. What ways can we do that? That's a great question. Who's got, who's got thoughts? Yeah. That's a, a very important because this is not a one-day event. We need to continue to work and continue to organize. Join an organization that's a, that you feel a strong affinity to, whether it's a women's organization, uh, environmental or climate change organization, 
an organization that will protect your rights as an immigrant or as a citizen of this country. Uh, stay informed. You know, read the New York Times and don't read fake news because we need to stay informed about what's going on in our country so we can know how to take action. I'm recommending that everybody look up online their United States Senator and their st uh, your member of Congress's phone number. Put it in your cell phone, put it in your speed dial, and get ready to make calls because we need to keep calling our representatives to stop the destructive agenda that is coming down the pike. An agenda that's going to hurt women, it's going to hurt seniors, it's going to cut Medicare, it's going to hurt the 30 million people without who de depend upon Obamacare in this country, and we need to stand up for them. And there are some great guys that have been put out. One of them I'd like to give a shout out to is Indivisible. So there's an Indivisible Ohio, there's an Indivisible Columbus. I'm sure wherever your readers are, there is a way to um, access Indivisible.com and access that great guide for activists to help you get organized in your own community. That's great. Yeah. I'd like to introduce you to a woman who, out of, out of this um, election result, that decided to put a business together, and we're here because of her, so I want to introduce Kristen Tempe. Thank you so much. Hi, um, my name is Christian Tempty and I'm the uh, CEO of Rise Travel. And um, this was born out of, out, of, out of everything that we're marching for today, really. Um, the election didn't go the way I expected. Um, and, you know, there was a fog, there was a sadness, there was an anger, and uh, decided to turn that um, into something bigger. And I realized that, you know, yes, I want to take a, a group down. We have 110 people uh, that we brought from Columbus, Ohio and Central Ohio uh, down here. Um, and on the way down, uh, you know, I decided that the other side is not wasting any time uh, preparing and doing what they need to do. So we're not going to waste any other time either. So on the way down, we had um, Representative Fetter and uh, Mary Jo Kilroy as well, um, also doing some workshops on getting involved in government. Uh, we had workshops on creating your mission statements. We had safety workshops to make sure that this is a peaceful assembly. Um, we, had, uh, we had all sorts of other workshops, even for the teens, because we really are working on trying to uh, empower and equip our advocates to, for, for today and our next generation of advocates, too. So we focused on the uh, Generation Z and the millennials, especially from ages 14 to 24, with some specialized workshops just for them. Uh, this is important because, uh, as Mary Jo Kilroy was saying, that this is not done after today. This is, this is the end of apathy right now right here and that's what we are about I've met so many new sisters from Ohio and we've bonded and I found another teacher colleague my friend and Hi. she has a wonderful story and what we want to do is change the narrative in this country that we are going to speak from the grassroots real lives of real people who struggle and just trying to make it in America and there's no reason for that struggle Washington is not listening so I want her to share her story um, and the struggle that teachers have, and I'm marching for public education. That's great. I'd love to hear your story, and also if readers have any questions, you can definitely ask them in the comments. Once again, we're here, the Women's March on Washington, with some Ohio women, including Teresa Fetter, and we're about to meet another Ohio woman right now. Hi, I'm Danielle Poling. I'm an elementary art teacher at a public school, um, and I have two young children, and I'm here for many reasons, um, mostly because of the rhetoric of the, the campaign with the racism and the sexism and the xenophobia. My students um, have shared how uncomfortable they are with things and um, so that's the reason I'm here. But to tell my own personal story is I was um, a private school teacher for many years teaching art and I could not find a public school art teaching job. Um, with all the cuts to art education, with all the cuts to education and you know, not just teaching to the test. Our education has had so many funding cuts. So um, I actually left the, the field because once I had a child, um, it was $1,000 a month to send my child to daycare. And then I had another child. So I left the field that I'm so passionate about because the cost of daycare. And so many women are leaving the workforce because they have a timeline where they have to have children and that timeline is when they're also paying student loans when they're paying for daycare when they're trying to make ends meet and it's putting women out of the workforce and it's really controlling our lives in a sense if women are in abusive marriage and they have a child they can't leave with the cost of daycare they're stuck 
So I'm advocating for women's autonomy and also for, um, you know, equality of all people and to change the language around, you know, um, diversity because diversity is beautiful and we need to remember that. That's great. Thanks so much. Um, when you get a chance, another teacher sister. I love teachers in America, and they are keeping America together right now, and we need to support public education and support all teachers. Um, that's great. So once again, we're here at the Women's March on Washington. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear your story. What brings you here today? Uh, my name is Amy White, and I came with a group from Columbus, the HearJaneRoar.org group, which uh, a core group of women got together after the election. We just felt... Um, just so discouraged that so many people supported someone who perpetuates hatred. And that's not the message that we teach students in our schools. It's not the message I teach my children as a mom. And we wanted to do something about it. What can we do? Well, we can at least come together and talk and be active and say we're not okay with this. This is not what we're wanting our young people to grow up with. This is not what we want them to know about the world, that it's okay to marginalize large groups of Americans. No, it's one nation. We're together. We're American people, and everyone is valued and has a place here. And kids internalize that from a young age. And what we teach as, as far as character development in our schools, and I teach in a public school, is not being... Adults in our political system are not being held accountable in the same way that we hold our students accountable in what they say and what they do. And it's really confusing as a young person to see that and, and have it be um, applauded and supported. And So that's why I'm here. That's great. Thanks so much. Um, I think we might have a question. Yeah, we, well, let me um, first share where some of the people are, are from. Uh, we have... Uh, people from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, Lisa from Germany, and uh, Ella from Australia, Deborah from, uh, from Main Mainville, Ohio, Austin, Texas is marching soon, Green Bay, Wisconsin, uh, Jalisco, Mex Mexico, Edmonton, and uh, we did have a question about, um, we had a question by um, a woman, uh, Christiane. She says, if it's a women's march, why can't pro-life women participate? If it's about women's health, why make it about abortion? Well, that's the whole crux of it all. This whole rhetoric and the whole 30 years of chaining women to that reason is deplorable. Because it's if they were really serious, they would want to be with us to reduce abortions and when I've challenged Republicans they get upset with me the right to life because that's not what it's about so that that's not what it's about it's about something else and I believe in what we've seen over the 30 years of rhetoric that they've used to win and put us in a in a corner so that we feel ashamed to stand up for our right that's all that already exists we're gonna we're not tolerating it anymore you know it's about chaining women to that corner that they're putting us in and I I want my freedoms I'm a veteran so I participated in that part of my country and I'm not willing to go back I will not go back and these women will not go back either so we're changing the narrative watch out it's not about abortion it's about women's rights. It's about American rights. It's about family rights. This isn't just a women's issue. This is a man's issue, too, because I think they want us happy. They don't like us upset. You don't want to get women upset in your family home. So imagine America having to be at this point and not cooperate. What we feel is fair. And this whole rhetoric and made up, you know, line of thinking on the Republican side, it's going to end. Because women on that side, they want universal preschool, um, quality daycare. They want affordable higher education. They want affordable home. And what is the first thing uh, our president just did? He signed um, a document saying that he is going to take away the affordable insurance for homes. And I understand that he was like a slum landlord. 
So he's not on our side. And we're going to let him know he's not on our side. And we're going to organize, 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 and resist in a peaceful way. We live in a free country, freedom of speech. And that's where we're going to tell our story. And we're going to mobilize to um, make sure that everyone turns out at every election. Okay? And start doing that. You can run for uh, uh, county. You can run for a central committee locally and be like the the organizer in your neighborhood. Let's get down to the grassroots and build up. That's how it all started when this country started. And they didn't even have an example of a free country. We are the example of a free country. So we're engaging ourselves again. And we're going to make sure in Ohio that we're telling our story. We're going to stand together and move this thing. And every Republican who's not with the people, they're going to be exposed back home. I've got my sleeping bag ready to protest anywhere and um, ready to do it because it's time. You know, women have been in the workforce for three decades now. And we just saw the movie on the way down here that showed how, how hard it was for the feminists to, you know, open up that door of the work field. And I was part of the first group of women that was part of that history. And I want more, you know, I want more. I'm not going to settle for what they're letting us settle. And we have the power of the vote. So we're equal when we go into that voting booth. That's what's so important, to realize your power. And women care about families and care about this country um, just as much as the men do. And I know the men are with us. They just aren't all together in our understanding. And they're going to be happier when they don't have to pay that high daycare bill, right? The high college debt. They can actually plan a life the way my generation did. And my generation needs to do that for your generation. So I have some young people here. Um, I didn't know if she wanted to speak, but we'll line them up. And if there are any other questions we have, um, we have a lot of young people who are taking the opportunity to be with their mother and they're right with them. So I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'd love to hear if anyone else has any more questions for um, Teresa Fetter, state representative, or there's lots of other Ohio women here. Um, do you want to uh, talk? Yeah. Hi, my name is Marie Duquette, and I'm a ordained minister in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, which is 4 million people strong and 10,000 congregations. So part of the reason that I came was that there's a... Um, uh, there's a misunderstanding by many in this country that evangelical Christians, especially evangelical white Christians, caused all of this and are part of the divisive force in the country. So I'm just showing up to represent for the ELCA that it's not evangelical doesn't apply to all Christians. Um, that's what I have to say. That's great. Thanks so much. Uh, once again, we're here at the Women's March on Washington. Um, looks like Teresa maybe has a comment. We, we have a point here that um, Don's Johns are locked. And the ones that are open are not usable. So, you know, if the president cared, he'd make sure those Johns are open for us. Yeah. Um, well, listen, so we're, we're here at the Women's March um, with Teresa Fetter, and, uh, who's a state representative from Ohio, and a lot of Ohio women, with some possible some uh, Portage on issues here at the march. Um, but um, thanks so much. We've gotten so many great comments from everyone. Thanks so much for, for watching. Um, and um, we'll have lots more for you today um, here at the Women's March on Washington.